Louisiana Beer Reviews Boulevard's Bourbon Barrel Quad Barrel Age Ale. Um, I did a duo review with my daughter and she liked it. Gave, she gave it a 92 A minus. I gave it an A. Uh, she had a few little problems with it, but not anything significant. I didn't realize this product had been on the market since uh, at least 2010. I think longer than that. Uh, I saw video reviews going back to 2010. Um, but why would I know? Because we haven't gotten Boulevard beers in Louisiana since the fall of 2022. It just started showing up, maybe in October here. Please enjoy by 30th of June 2024. It's 12.2% alcohol, 26 bitterness units, so relatively low bitterness, very high alcohol, and it's certified kosher. All right, so um, yeah, it was fifteen dollars for the four pack. So three seventy five a bottle, but my daughter says she thought it was worth it, worth the price. So first Louisiana purchase Boulevard beer, in my experience, and they had two other barrel age offerings, but I didn't buy them. Maybe every month I'll get a new one. Hopefully we'll get more Boulevard beers. I think I saw the three. Not, no, that's a goose. I think I. I was thinking I saw the famous Boulevard unfiltered wheat. I might have seen it. I might be confusing it with, like I said, the Goose Island. Um, yeah, it's a copper. But there's a cloudiness to it and a tan. It's almost like um. More of a tan than copper and um. Looks like a lot of the pumpkin beers that you'll find. Eggshell head. And when I started researching it after we did the review, um, come to find out they use cherries in it. It's aged in bourbon barrels. Uh, don't know who's. And then they use cherries. And we didn't detect cherries. We never talked about it. My daughter talked about sauerkraut, which she said, I know that's strange, but that's what I'm detecting. They said they were doing homemade sauerkraut. I don't know. All right. Solo reviews I can think a little better. Like when I do duos, I love to do them, but I'll be concentrating half on the beer. I'll be thinking, did I let the other person talk enough? Am I interrupting? Or like, what did they say? You know, I'm trying to manage it. But you can understand that. Okay. Um, too cold to go sit outside. A quad is a type of strong Belgian style ale, quadruple, quadruple, and then they also have the bright yellow tripels. They have the brown dubbels. Okay. Yeah, it's not a lot of aroma. Maybe a little golden raisin or um, dates. Let's go with the taste. <laughs> Definite bourbon barrel here. I was going to say sherry at first. <laughs> it's funny. Bourbon barrels. Get the strong residual bourbon. Nice lacing. Um, golden raisin, dates. It contains cherries. I guess now that I know it's got cherries in it, I say, okay, it's got it. I'll taste it. Like you would in a, I don't know, a cherry bounce or Kiafa cherry wine specialty, but going in cold like we did, we didn't detect cherries. And it's that old story I tell about going to Michael Komarov's house in 2015. He gave me the grapefruit sculpin. Well, I knew about sculpin a little bit. It was a really high, highly regarded India Pale Ale from California and Ballast Point. I think previous to that, I might have tried sculpin, but whatever the case, he was saying it was a blind taste test. So and that's why I think they're so important. He was saying, what do you think about it? And, of course, I gave it a high score, I think 94. And, oh, yeah, it's great, great, you know. 
Um, but he said, well, do you notice anything else in the beer? I say, no, no. It just tastes like an IPA to me. Extra IPA. Then he revealed it, grapefruit. I said, oh, man. But then once you know, then it's in your mind so you could taste it in subsequent tastings. Yeah, so there's that cherry acidity. Cherries being acidic. Um, we were noticing that earlier in the duo, like an acidity, but we thought it was just, we didn't know what it was, you know, coming from. It's not heavy. We said that. It's not a heavy body beer. You think at 12.2, it's going to be thick. It's really light body, light to medium. Amazing. Finishes dry. I gave it, now, Beer Advocate's given it 94 also, outstanding. I gave it a 94. Rape Beer's given it 98 overall, 95 in the style. That's a strange website. You know, some beers they'll give that, like this, a really appropriate high score, and then others that are really good, you, might, you know, it might be average beers as far as price, you know, or below average price, mass-produced beers, and they'll give it like a, a 4 out of 100, or a 1, or even, in the case of natural ice, a 0 out of a 100. <laughs> like, insanity, you know. And then Untap's given this a 80, 82 which is high for them. Most good beers on Untap come around 75, 76. It's really pleasant. It does not taste like other quads I've had from Belgium, which I guess those are better, okay? I'm sorry, Boulevard. I mean, Gutendrack and all of them. Crown Reserve from Chimay. And those, they're just hard to beat. But, um, this is still, of course, those are not going to be 375 a bottle either. They're going to be like 799 a bottle. <laughs> 699 minimum. And you're only going to get 11.2 ounces, so that has to be considered. So, for an American value priced <laughs> quadruple barrel age it's a winner I know before the events of 2020 Anheuser Busch was starting to get into that they were starting to experiment with Budweiser Jim Beam not exactly barrel age they were adding parts you know slices spirals of Jim Beam barrels to the Budweiser and making a super strong Budweiser, you know, 7% dark Budweiser, really not that close. Well, it was sort of related to Budweiser in the sense it was rice adjunct and all, but um, those were interesting, very interesting, and and they had a number of them. That's just one I'm naming. They had a number, and they were, everybody was like, wow, this, you know, this is something. And, uh, and I guess in <laughs> March 2021, that's when they had the last one, the reserve, and, um, could have just been too complicated. Maybe they'll come back and do another series. So those were really good. I mean, I was enjoying those to the hilt. Those are like super mass produced barrel age related products. Now this is like a macro craft beer company. Sort of like Yingling. Boulevard's that big now. And that's reached Louisiana. I think it's already in Florida. Florida. Uh, Yingling is going west. Every couple of months, they'll add a new state. Now that they're in collaboration with Molson Coors, they have a lot of their beers produced by Molson Coors in Fort Worth, Texas. Some people say that's a sellout. Oh, I'm so angry about it. How could England do this to me? <laughs> I don't know why people think that way. It's a company, okay? They're trying to sell the product. They don't have that much. They don't. They have limited. They have a huge capacity at their Tampa. Brewing and Pennsylvania Brewery and all, but the old Schlitz huge brewery in Tampa, Florida. But still, it's still limited for across the United States. Okay, so they collaborated with Miller Brewing Company in Fort Worth, Texas. 
part of Molson Coors. They say, here's our recipe lineup. Can you do it? They say, of course, we can do anything. So, it's, it's, it's what it is. It's like Foster's. They could ship it from Australia. And, and that could be done, but you wouldn't be getting a 25.4 ounce oil can of the 5% American version Foster's and 5.5% Foster's Special Bitters, now renamed Foster's Premium Ale, for $1.99 a can at Dormax. I still see a $1.99 a can. It would be like, you know, $4.99, $5.99 a can because of all the shipping and the production costs and the Australian taxes, not to mention that, which they pay to pay for all their free benefits, you know. You got to pay for your free benefits. Benefits. But, um, so, when you hear about these things, before you get too excited, think about it for a little bit and realize that the business world and the beer, wine, and liquor world are related. They're part of the same thing. And it may not be as good as you want it to be in, 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 a, in a certain circumstance, but it's probably not anywhere near as bad as you think it is. So... Um, Is Boulevard doing any collaborations as far as like outsourcing their production? It could be. I, this I don't know. Um, I think this one is still. Yeah, Brewed and Bottle, Kansas City, Missouri. Okay. But some of their their more mass pro, mass pro stuff, production stuff like uh, unfiltered unfil wheat. Oh, they have some others. I don't know what they are. Cause like I said, we're not. I just know that unfiltered wheat is their number one, their flagship. It could be outsourced at this point now. Nice lacing. Score. Um, oh, it's divine. I mean that in a tasting sense, not in a literal sense. You know what I mean. We use these terms loosely. It's dynamite. It sounds better. It's a jewel. I mean, would I buy another four pack? I would actually. Next year, maybe I'll buy another one. I said 94 in the original, but it's just got that nice bourbon barrel. Is it Heaven Hill? Oh, um, is it Lux Row? I could. Is it Barton? Well. <laughs> Is it Buffalo Trace? It might be. I don't know what, whose barrels it is. I'm going to go with 96 now. I'm really, this is the kind of beer, I think, where the more you, and the, the body's light. That's, I think that's a, actually helps it. A lot of these beers, are the body's a little too heavy. It's a little syrupy, you know, they get a little, mm, but this one is so light, it could get you in trouble because it's drinkable. And you say, I'm going to drink another. I don't feel it. <laughs> Not yet. Um, I'm going to go with a 96. 9.6 out of 10. A jewel of a beer. And I'm so, I was so shocked to find out. I thought it was something new. Like, oh, look at this new product. Been, out, been around maybe going on 20 years. <laughs> but it used to be a very hard to get specialty item. And a big, like I said, 25.4 ounce bottle. 750 milliliters. And uh, it would be like you had to get on a list and wait, and maybe they'd be sold out when you got there, or that kind of mystique-type product. But now it's at, at Total Wine and More, and who knows, I might see it at Walmart next week. <laughs> That's not actually not a joke. So, laissez les bon temps relate a 9.6 out of 10, and I'm going to end this review by saying, y'all go to Kansas City, Missouri, and tour the Boulevard Brewing Company Brewery.